Yeah, you know, the installs is going well because the one key thing for us was just to teach the guys, you know, the terminology, the system, how we want to operate, how we want to practice, um, and just keep getting better each day. And the guys have handled that, you know, especially here the last two weeks when you consider some of the uh, challenges we've had with the offensive line, it's still those guys have been fighting, you know, to give us the opportunity to practice each day at the same tempo and pace that we want to practice. Have you been able to get a good sense of, of where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, having, having seen 13 practices now and, and being only – Saturday's the spring game, so yeah. it's coming to an end quick. Well, I think obviously one of the obvious strengths is our quarterback in, in Brennan. And then there's been a number of other guys that have uh, shown improvement and I feel confident about them, you know, in the receiver room with uh, Malachi Fields along with uh, Dontavious Wicks. You know, and uh, and Keaton Thompson, KT, you know, and uh, so those guys have been uh, doing what we expect them to do and trying to push them to do more. You know, it was good to see Malachi get out there and compete um, this spring the way he did. He's a you know low maintenance, smart guy. Um, in the tight end room, I've been I've been pleased with those guys. You know, uh, with Wood and, and and Mish, and even some of those young, younger guys with. You know, feel like got a good foundation there for the future. But uh, Woods and Mish have done a good job for us uh, up front. I mean, I give kudos, kudos, tip my hat off to uh, Jonathan Leach. I mean, the kid every day, you know, just battle, battle. He's getting better. Uh, I like the way he's progressing. Um, you know, we've had uh, Devon, uh, Derek, showing some flashes as well uh, with that. And then, uh, you know, Logan, he's been a little bit limited, but he has some ability. So. Really excited to see when he gets back to us at full health, um, what he can bring to us. And then, you know, for the running backs, they had no choice uh, but to get better because that was a really big point of emphasis uh, to give those guys an opportunity to show us uh, what they're capable of doing. And it's been obviously a point of emphasis of trying to establish the run throughout spring, not only for our benefit, but for the benefit of our defense. So those guys have answered the bell from the sim from the standpoint of the rep volume that they've taken, you know, with with Mike Hollins and a and a mod, especially after we lost Ronnie, you know, those guys, the volume of reps is just going up tremendously, and they've they responded to the bell, you know. But in the, so I like where some of those guys are. We're not a finished product, obviously, uh, but the spring ball we have gotten better uh, each day, um, and that's the thing about spring practice. It's gonna be days where the defense wins a drill, the offense wins a drill. But that's good back and forth, and that's where we know we're growing as a team. Hey, Des, it's Mike from Richmond. Um, a year ago, the, the offense had a lot of quick drives, yep. um, you know, big plays, which I, I know are great, but kind of put the defense in, in a tough spot. It sounds like the offense you guys have been crafting is designed to possess the football a little bit more, um, to kind of earn your way down the field. Is that an adjustment for a quarterback, and, and how has Brennan adapted to kind of a, a shift in the mindset? Well, uh, first of all, we're, we will want to score in one play if we can, you know, as an offense, right? So it's not that we're crafting the offense to kind of grind it out. We're, we're crafting a team to be physical, all right? And like, like I've said before, it's to win, win the down, right? So how can we win the down, you know? We talk about first, first down, we want to gain four or more. And we want to be able to do that running or throwing a football. So we win that down, the first down. We want to win second down, right? So we want to gain at least half on second down. So we want to be able to win that. If it's second and eight and we decide to run the ball, we want to make at least third and four, you know, or if we throw the ball. So that's what we're talking about with the balance part of it. If we can score in one, two, or three plays, yes, let's score. We're not trying to not score the football, but we also know that there's going to be drives or situations in the game where we do have to maintain a four-minute possession right, to, to win a game. And we have to be able to win a four-minute situation uh, with r running the football to keep the other team's offense off the field to win the game. So that's the whole mindset of what we're trying to do as a, as a program. And as you, you build your offense and your roster, obviously you'll get the players to fit what you want to do. Right yeah. now we've talked about you know, being a little thin and inexperienced on the offensive line. That would seem to naturally lend itself to, to quicker, shorter throws. Um, how would you evaluate Brennan in that regard? Yeah, uh, Brennan, he's he's fine with 
play uh, play action pass, short game, you know, pushing the ball down the field. You know, he's a he's a smart guy, recognizing coverages. He has a quick release to get the ball out on time. So, and we've we've challenged him in that regard with some things, just fundamentally with uh, footwork and just rhythm drops and getting the ball out, whether it's quick game or just natural drop back pass. Thank you. No problem. As this is David Teal with the Richmond Times Dispatch, how much, if at all, will depth and injury concerns limit what we see Saturday at Scott Stadium? Oh, tremendously. I mean, we I don't know the number, but I know we don't have 10 offensive linemen, so somebody's going to have to play on both sides probably, right? Because um, we haven't had 10 in the last uh, couple practices. Um, so that, that'll limit it. You know, and also we just – we put a lot of work in throughout the spring and, and kind of answer some of the questions we want to answer as a staff and, and being smart about how we go about uh, Saturday with the guys. Because, again, we have – I think we get uh, Paris Jones back, but uh, go, other than that we have two running backs. So we have Ahmad and we have uh, – and Mike Hollis. So, Mike. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's some limitations, you know, for us uh, – with with that with the injury situation or the guys being limited, so. Yeah, and, and with the game being televised, do you purposely dial it back? Yeah, because I mean everybody's probably watching this to see okay what exactly is Coach Elliott and his staff doing offensively and defensively, and we don't need to give them, you know, we might call a couple of trick plays out there, right? Get them, get them prepared for that. You know, who knows? Uh, Coach Elliott, we, we talked about some things we may do or we may not do, but uh, we, we know that uh, people are going to be watching this game on Saturday. So, The coach of Tank Kerr's with AP. Yep. Um, how much of the H-back position is fullback and how much is tight end? So it's out of the same group. Um, that we have here with the, with our tight end group, we have six guys in that room, you know, and uh, and both Mish and Sackett are versatile enough to play the F in the twelve personnel force. That is kind of a that's our hybrid guy. He could be a fullback if we're in that situation, or he can be you know an attach or detach another tight end in twelve personnel. So both of those guys have handled handled that role as the Y and the F um, in the offense. And then you're trying to develop, you know, Josh Rawlings in the same mold uh, to be able to be versatile in doing both of those. And how much do you expect to use an age back? It, it's based on each each game, you know. Does the opponent, the being that personnel, is it a benefit for us versus that opponent? So that's week to week. And Grant was talking about having Heath Miller around. What, a, what kind of benefit has that been to you? Oh, it's been awesome. You know, you talking about have a guy of that caliber, you know, that profile of a player here at, at the University of Virginia in his NFL career. He lives here locally and, you know, wants to be around ball. Hey, come on, buddy. I'd love to have you. You got you got a lot of wisdom there. And it's good for the guys, too. If I'm a tight end and, and this guy's hanging out in my meeting and, uh, you know, is out at practice and he's watching me do all my individual drills, he may have a nugget for you. Like, you, what's, what's a better resource than Heath Miller? Thank you. Hey Coach Preston with CBS 19. Wanted to ask, you know, obviously the tight end role has looked a, a bit bigger in recent years with Tony and uh, Jelani coming through here. What does it look like this year with, you know, the personnel that you have and also all the time you have a wide receiver and running back? Yeah, it goes back to what I said earlier, right? You know, as we're evaluating uh, our opponents and if playing with tw two tight ends in the game gives us a distinct advantage against them, then let's utilize two tight ends. If it doesn't, and we're better suited being in more 11 personnel or even 10 personnel, then that's what we need to do to win the game. Uh, you know, that's the whole objective is to try to win the game regardless of who's in or who's out. Like, what gives us the best opportunity to win the game? Grant has kind of played a complementary role the past couple of years to Tony and Jelani. What have you seen from him this spring as he's kind of stepping into more reps? Yeah, you know, uh, I think he's a smart guy. Uh, he's a good hard worker. Um, practices hard with effort, and it matters to him, right? Uh, very detailed. So if, if he makes a mistake, he asks why. He asks the good questions of why and how can he correct it. So he's, he's been a pleasure to be around, and I'm looking forward to him helping us win games in the fall.
One last thing, we just mentioned Heath. How did you know it come to be that you know he was coming to a couple of practices here? Well, uh, you know, he and Coach Higgins, I believe, played together, correct? So we just having a conversation, and uh, he came by the office back here before spring ball started, probably just to meet the new coaches, right? And I offered him the invitation, say, hey, buddy, if spring ball, if you want to come by and hang out, feel free to do so. And he took that invitation and he's run with it, and I'm, I'm glad to have him out here with us. Yeah, he's not coaching at all. He's just hanging out with the guys. Go ahead. Coach, this is Chris Wright with thesaber.com. The, um, a few days ago, Coach Rudzinski was on here with us, yep. and he said he's learned a lot going against some of the stuff you guys are putting out there. Uh -huh. What are you learning kind of going against the, the very looks he's, he's given you? Oh, it, yeah, it, it's been very good for us offensively. And I told the, I told the guys on offense, like, one thing about – these now 13 practices that we've gone through, you know, obviously we have two more in the spring, plus however many we get in in, uh, in training camp, we're going to be very well prepared for our opponent because we, we've seen a lot of different things um, from Coach Rudd and his, and his package, which has been good. I love it, you know. It's not just, you know, hey, they line up in this, this front and play ball. He does a lot of stuff to mix some things up that tests our rules as an offense. Uh, so I, I, I enjoyed that competition with him as well. So, as this, this is David Teal again. In each of his two seasons as the starter, Brennan has led the team in carries. Okay. That, does that need to change? I would like to think that's going to change. Hopefully he's not leading our team in carries after the 2022 season. This is Jackie from 24 seven. Um, I know before spring practice, all of you guys wanted to evaluate your current roster and yep. kind of see how you guys stood. When you look at it, I know you have injury concerns. How do you feel? Do you feel comfortable with your you know, tight end position? Do you com feel comfortable with a lot of the positions on offense or do you feel like you need to kind of reinforce it, you know, possibly in the portal? Well, we still have, I don't know the exact number of scholarships available. So if there's a player that fits what we are looking for character-wise, you know, work ethic, talent, then we need to add them to our program. If we can add a player that can help us, we should add a player that can help us. And uh, my next question, you know, Joshua Rawlings, he was a guy who entered a transit portal, but then moved Drew and came in. How much have you seen him develop over the course of the last few practices? Yeah, you know, honestly, I didn't even know he did that, be, truth, be truthful. But uh, so he's been, a, he's been great every day. Uh, doing extra, you know, watching some film uh, coming in. And uh, he's having good pra some good spring practices as well. You know, he has the ability to catch the ball. You know, I do know he's kind of recovering, I guess, from uh, he had an ACL injury or something like that. So he's still kind of getting his lower body back into conditioning strength-wise uh, with that. So once we finish spring ball, obviously they got exams. They got summer training. So this summer will be huge for him and just continue to develop his lower body and conditioning, get back into fully football shape so he can come into August and continue to compete with, uh, with Mish and Woods. Hey, Des, it's Mike in Richmond again. Um, going back, considering the, the lack of experience and depth on that offensive line, um, how big a role will the tight ends, the running backs, need to have in, in protection uh, at least this season uh, in what you're trying to do? Yeah, it all depends on how, you know, as we're – evaluate the team, the opponent we're playing. If we need to incorporate those guys into the mix, then we will. Again, it's about, you know, again, throughout training camp, we're still going to get these guys every opportunity to continue to develop up front, all right, without helping them now, right? Let's continue to make these guys develop, see how much they improve, knowing that, to answer your question, that we can incorporate a running back in the protection or a tight end if need it be. But right now, let's not even do that. Let's continue to stress these guys up front in their development in all phases in their run blocking and their pass blocking. And you mentioned uh, working against Coach Rudd's defense. Um, how would you describe it? Uh, he said 3-4. We kind of look at it like a 4-2-5. What, yeah. what would you, if you were kind of putting it up on the board for an offense as yeah. a base, what would you, how would you describe it? It's 3-4. It's 3-4, and he's, he has some varying uh, looks to it, but it's 3-4. Thank you. Yep. We've got time for one or two more questions, if any more. 
That is Greg, Greg Medea again from the Daily Progress. I know you had Cordaro Patterson last year in Atlanta. Yes. Have you taken anything you you guys maybe did with him and, and apply it to, to Keaton at all? Hey, we'll find out in the fall. <laughs> 